coming out of just having led um, a few hybrid sessions that were messy, um, I wanted to invite you just into my live brain, live thinking about how to do hybrid really well. Um, and in particular, I've got four learnings here that are like really practical. One is um, like the tech of hybrid that you might find really interesting and useful. And another idea, or actually, so tech costs money. Um, some other tools are free and useful for all and just the idea and approach um, to it. And then one is a learning that I was actually teaching in the workshop that I was leading um, to this company. And it actually gave me a very important learning for how to approach hybrid in general. And so first I wanna start off with um, a little kudos and thank you and credit to uh, Jeremy at Baker Tilly. Hello, if you're watching. Um, so big accounting firm does lots of stuff. Um, a highly group, highly smart group. That doesn't make sense. This is what you get when you get an unedited video. Highly smart group of people. And um, I was there to help them ask better questions. So they were in this multi-day training um, that I was a piece of, all with the goal of um, upskilling their ability to become people developers. So they're not just doing people's taxes, not just doing accounting, but they're actually spending a percentage of their time developing the people that work for them. Uh, many people on the team had 30 to 40 employees working for or with them. And so um, that's the context, right? Session focused on how do you ask uh, really powerful questions to create conversations that matter because in uh, a lot of ways, questions are the lowest hanging fruit, cheapest tool to develop human beings better. So the first thing I wanna give kudos to Jeremy and the talent uh, development team at Baker Tilly they're doing hybrid pretty darn well. So they got two pieces of tech, uh, one which I have and have been using uh, since pre-pandemic, which is a catch box. You can get it uh, printed with your own whatever design on it. Um, and they had this in the room hooked up right to Zoom. So I was presenting remotely to this group and there's 30 people in person and another 10 remote on Zoom with me. And this catch box was flying all around the room in person. So I was able to hear what uh, people were saying and so were the rest of people were remote as opposed to just leaving them in the dust. Um, so that was one really, really cool piece of tech. The other uh, cool piece of tech was, let's see if I can just pull up a screenshot. We're doing the unedited version of the video today if you haven't picked up on that. Um, they had this camera and there's a bunch of solutions for this and some of them are a thousand plus dollars. And this is, I think, one of Jeremy's favorites, and it's also become one of my favorites. It's called the Obspot, under 200 bucks, and it follows you around. So there's also, let's see if we can find a little bit of a picture here. Okay, so there's gestures, right? So if you want to, um, if you want the camera to follow you or the group as they're moving, um, you can do that. If you want them to zoom in, you do this little L here. Um, and for me as a presenter, because I was presenting in this office, which is still only half set up, I just moved recently, um, it made me feel so much more like I was in the room. And vice versa, I think the group felt so much more like I was in the room with them because I was able to talk back and forth really seamlessly, even though there were seven tables of four people set up together in a room, right? I had sent them um, We Connect cards. We're doing all the engaging interactive stuff that I would typically do leading a group in person. I just happened to be leading it from this space, right? And the Obspot, that camera, allowed me to do that really well, paired with the catch box. Jeremy also had the uh, catch, oh, catch box is over here. Um, they also make uh, like a lapel microphone that goes on you and you can hook all that up, funnel your audio through both of those, right through Zoom. Um, and so I was able to talk with Jeremy back and forth because it's really important if you're gonna lead anything uh, remotely that you have some hands in the room, you're giving people some roles. So those are the first uh, two pieces of tech. This one is just a concept, and maybe it's actually worth uh, writing out here. Oh, I'm not plugged into the iPad. We're going really live. Uh, this is actually hilarious that this is coming up because what I'm about to write on this iPad um, is going to be adaptations make you advanced. I think it's worth actually writing out. Adaptations make you advance. And here's the example that I'll offer. 
So part of what allowed me to do what I'm about to describe is two years of leading remotely and really trying to master and get better at how to make virtual engagement easy, right? And so I had some tools that were logged in my brain that I figured out through some stumbles and failures beforehand. And so in this particular uh, session, I wanted to end the, my workshop with everybody writing a letter to themselves that I was gonna mail to them six months in the future. So I asked them to write down something that they wanted to keep top of mind in their life six months in the future and write it down on the back of a card what they're grateful for, what they want uh, to remember, put it in an envelope and send it to me. And then I realized, oh my goodness, this is so relevant for the 30 people that are in the group who I dropped off uh, or sent envelopes and cards to. Problem though, this is a good reminder of, um, my wife is meeting me in the office. Um, when you're hybrid and you're remote, distractions come in. So my 10 hybrid people, I had to create some method of them to write a future, uh, letter to themselves. I didn't send them the envelopes. And that's when I remembered this lovely site, futureme.org, which I've shared in a couple past videos maybe. Um, it's a really easy way without giving your email to some giant marketing scheme um, to write a letter to yourself in the future. You choose when you send it, the date, etc. cetera. Um, you enter your email address and you send it to yourself in the future. And so, adaptations make you advanced. Because I was able to do that as I was leading this, I realized in the moment, oh goodness, I did not prep a way for remote folks to be involved in this. And so instead of leaving them excluded and saying, sorry, I was able to just paste that link into the chat real quick. Um, super useful. Okay, there's one more idea which I'm forgetting about. Aha, this one's super quick. Um, double your count. So in my workshop, I shared that kids tend to ask um, 300 to 400 questions per day and adults tend to ask six to 12 questions. Whoa. And so the thought is um, just double your count. And family is important and my wife is calling and so I'm saying goodbye to you. Hopefully that's useful. Double your question count, ask hybrid people questions. See ya. Hey Kate.